Well, Coach, what do you hope to get out of the tour? Oh, well, practice. We we had our first practice today. Um, we've been, you know, we've been doing things an hour, but it's we really had they had nothing to look forward to in terms of games and that kind of thing. So today we started kind of getting ready. We're going to play three games over there, but I think it's a great opportunity for them to bond. We got a lot of new guys, and the more time they spend together, I think the better that's going to be for us. How's that bonding going so far? I know they haven't had a whole lot of time, but are you starting to see it? Well, it's great. They, uh, I think Oscar was uh, was the last one in, in and they've, they've taken him under their wing, and they're good. I mean, you really can't tell the difference between the old guys and the new guys. Of course, the old guys aren't that old, but... Except for Jermaine, but um, yeah, I mean they're, they're they they get along great. They hang together. They it, it's a lot like the really good teams that we had in the past. Did you have to do anything to try to spark that, especially in light of some of the issues you went through last year, or did it happen? Well, I think I think a lot of it's personalities. Um, Jordan and Emmett, I think, have been great. I mean, those guys, uh, those guys that do a great job of trying to include everybody in, you know, virtually everything that they do. Uh, they they embraced s some of the things that you know that we have always done. The children's hospital thing. The, you know, we've played paintball. We've shot skeet. We've played softball. We've done all that, and they they embraced that where. Um, I'm not so sure that's been the case the last few years. I didn't. No. <laughs> Justin, I'd drop it on my foot. And Any good bowlers on the team? I didn't go. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get a recap. No. Uh, it's kind of like you guys work depending on mess. You know, it's kind of sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. You know. Coach, is everybody who's going to be on the roster this season going to be able to go on the form? No, uh -uh. no, we'll have we'll have at least one, maybe two, finishing up things. That's Richardson and Sherman. Uh, yeah, that's two. Yeah, we may have, we may have one more. Just see how it goes. When uh, when you finally gather everybody and, and get serious about this, how do you start a new year after last year? I mean, you haven't done that very often, but you did have to do it a few years ago. Well, Bob, I think the biggest thing is you you don't have to coach enthusiasm with with these guys. You know, I think. You know, a year ago it was it was like you're 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 trying to coach effort and you're trying to coach basketball and it, and it's hard to do both. And, and these guys, their their efforts been efforts been terrific. Their attitudes been great. They um, they spend a lot of time in this building. Uh, they. And we we we've only been allowed to work out by rule an hour, and those guys are in here way more than an hour on their own, and and that has that wasn't the case before. With the uh, scholarship uh, situation, um, can you can you put Logan back on scholarship? He's uh, he's on scholarship. He's been on scholarship. He is okay. Yeah. Starting. Like the summer? So, yeah, beginning of the summer. He's he's already a couple classes into his master's degree. Yeah. What Maybe more than that. I'm sorry. What have you seen from McNeil and Oscar? Well, Sean can make shots. And, and Oscar plays so hard, uh, he doesn't know what he's doing yet because this is only his second or third day. But he plays so hard, runs so hard, he's so long. I mean, he gets the balls that 
other people can't get to. And, and it's been good for him. You know, it's been good for him to play against Derek every day and and really play against Logan every day. You don't get that in high school. And uh, but he's he's been he's been really good. He can rebound that ball and really runs, really really runs. Have you seen over the summer steps forward by Derek? Yeah, yeah. Um, try, I'm trying to figure out what to say here. Um, Derek just has a has a, a, a timeliness issue. Which which he hasn't hasn't had this summer at all. I mean, he's well, yeah, he did one time, one time he did, and uh, you know you gotta you gotta make sure he understands that you can't you can't do that. You can't. Derek hopefully has a has a long career when he's out of here, which you know we all hope he does. But he's he's got to take care of this. You know, it, it's it's not bad stuff. It's not you know when you when you think about guys doing bad things. He doesn't do bad things. He just every once in a while he just doesn't show up on time. Even though I mean, it's but it's not. It's never bad. It's never like he misses half of something or misses something. It's never that. It's but we're trying to trying to get him to the point where if and when he becomes a professional, he can act like a professional. Starting a half hour earlier than they do, or hour. I've done, I've done that before, but I would just as soon try to uh, try to get Derek to do do the timeliness thing uh, without tricking him. Hey Bob, just to shore up something on Logan, I don't know how you do it, but sometimes football can give guys summer scholarships and maybe they come off in the fall or it's Logan like full time. No, he's full time. Yeah, Mike, he deserves it. You know, I mean, we we've had him on scholarship before, and uh, he's he had he had the other scholarship, you know, where he got he got everything, tuition, everything paid for. So he's never been without aid, but uh, this is a lot more comprehensive aid, the, the athletic scholarship than the other. But he's been great. I mean, you talk about a a guy who. I mean, he's like coach. If you need a scholarship, that's that's fine. You know, he's never he's never felt neglected or left out or pouted or anything. He's been great. Is your plan press when you go overseas? <clears throat> well, we haven't done it yet, Tony. Um, it's going to take a while. We can't we can't guard in a quarter court right now, uh, with with all these new guys. But that's that's where we want to get to. I'm not sure we get to to do it in Spain, but we will get to do it. Yeah. For the guys that were here previously, how much restructuring is there? I mean, you're going to be a different kind of team. I I, I hope. I think I think we're gonna. It, it looks like to me now, Bob, that we're gonna be more. Um, I don't want to say guard oriented because we're gonna throw it. We're gonna throw it to Derek and 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 Logan and Oscar. But we can play three perimeter guys, and we can get away with playing three perimeter guys because we've got we've got small guard. We got a couple of small guards, but then we've got also got some big guards. Um, Jermaine being six six and Sean's six three or he says six four he's not I'm six four he's six three but we we have bigger and and he's a he's a he's a stronger you know guard and we'll be able to play three guards I think a lot more than we've played three guards in a long time. Does that mean you try to get Oscar and Derek together? Oh, they're gonna play together, yeah. They seem like they are similar in some senses, but also they're very, they're different enough that it can't work. Well, we, we've, we've run some triangle things. I mean, we've run a lot of triangle stuff in the past. and Those guys, those guys, 
once they learn what they're doing, should be pretty good in Triangle. With, um, Taz and Ethan, will there be a cram session for them when they do get me out there? I'm assuming this will be a lot they're going to be missing out on. Well, it's going to be, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's going to be a big-time cram session for them. You know, I think the thing about Taz is so athletic that, you know, he's it's he's he's like you watch Oscar out there now. He has, doesn't know what he's doing, but because of his athleticism, he still makes plays. And I I, I think without a question, Taz will be able to do that. I mean, he's really a good athlete. Bob, you mentioned that uh, Emmett and Jordan had kind of embraced a lot of the things you guys like to do off the court. How are they coming along on the court? I know they had their, their moments as freshmen, but it seems like they're going to be guys that you're probably going to have to depend on a lot this year. Well, Jordan played with a torn MCL last year and 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 had had the surgery. And so he's, you know, we've been, we've been fighting with him about don't do so much. You know, most guys you're fighting with to, you know, do something. And, 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 and he's been, he understands, he's been pretty good. I think Emmett is, uh, at least to this point, is is the most improved guy that we've had in a long time. I mean, he's he's playing extremely well. Uh, he's, I think he's grown a little bit. He's added some weight, but his skill level's really improved, and it means he's obviously put a lot of time in. Almost every time the subject of leadership comes up, Jordan gets mentioned. If you had a sophomore that has been to that level, that might be one of the players on the team previously in their career. I'm sure I have. I I'd have to think about it, but I'm sure I have. Um. Bob, the the postseason recruiting. You know, it's not new, but it just seems like it's really competitive now trying to add one or two guys after the season with transfers and postgraduates and guys who are who don't commit early on. Um, I guess am I, am I honest on there? But what is that atmosphere like when there's not a lot of people but there's a lot of schools looking for guys? Well I'm not a fan. <clears throat> I'm I'm not a fan of it. I think I think what's lost in all this stuff is, you know, we, we we, the NCAA, the, the, the NCAA body has been so concerned with individual rights that they forgot there's other guys involved as well. And, you know, you, you have guys for, for three years, say, particularly at a, at a mid-major level, and the guys, you work with them and they become pretty good, and then all of a sudden you don't have them anymore. That's not fair to the guys that are left. You know, I... I guess I'm different, but I was always brought up, you know, that um, your freedom ends where you're, you start infringing on somebody else's. And, and uh, you know, I think that's, I think that makes it hard. Um, and, and I think, you know, really basically, if you look at our guys that left, they've all gone down, they haven't gone up. They've gone, they've gone down a level. Except for a Beetle maybe going to Alabama, but but then you know you don't know you don't know how much they're going to play. Going down maybe from a playing time standpoint maybe it's a good thing. I, I I just Mike I don't. It just seems to me that those guys those guys come in with a with a different attitude about. Um, They're going to get more shots, or they're they're going to they're going to get more more notoriety, or they're going to get you know, and and it, it's I think it's really hard to. The guys have done it. They're obviously a lot smarter than me, or or, or way less stubborn than I am. But I, I just think it's hard. In a situation like yours, you're trying to get to 13. There's a balance of quantity and quality. You don't want to add just guys. Evaluations trickier. I, I I don't know that we ab- absolutely have to have thirteen, Mike. I I mean we have we have had, but 
if you think about it, you know, our 13th guy in a lot of ways, it was like Lamont. We took Lamont really late, and 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 it was it was for uh, Lamont to continue to grow, you know. And, and he's a guy who grew uh, physically and 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 as a basketball player. Uh, we've taken we've taken numerous freshmen. I mean, you think about it when we took J.C. and Dax. I think we we still had Wani and we had Gary and we had did we have we had Tariq and we had Jay Sean, you know. So obviously we didn't bring those two into play. I mean, as it turned out, they ended up playing. But we we brought those guys in because you know we were getting ready to lose two really good players and 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 Wani and Gary. Jordan had surgery in what, April. Or? April. He's still feeling it. I mean, I mean, it's 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 going to swell up for a period of time, a little bit. I mean, it's not it's not like it blows up, but he's got a little swelling in it. That's going to happen. That's going to happen until the knee gets used to it. But will he be full go in the tour? If he's full go now, really. I mean, we. We held him out of a little bit of stuff today because I just I didn't want and, and Doc didn't think it was a good idea for him to go a solid three hours. Uh, you know, after having not having more than an hour before, but who knows? I mean, he may have been out here four hours, uh, you know, at midnight. Who knows? He's in here a lot. That obviously wasn't the full ACL tear then. I mean, no, but most of them aren't, Bob. Repair. Yeah, but I, that's generally the case. I mean, it, it's it's it, it's very rare that you lose your entire meniscus. You know, they they clip it. Um, and any, I guess anytime you take a body part out or part of, part of a body part, it affects your body. But it's not like it's not like a, a, an ACL where they have to go in and rebuild it or anything. You say you're going to play Oscar and Derek together. What do you envision out of that? How do you how do you envision that? A lot of rebounds. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of rebounds. I, I I think we can go back to dominating the glass like we did at one time. I don't. Know, I guess I think that probably the last time that that we were able to play two bigs together like that was was Kenyon and Jermaine Tate. I mean, they were both six nine, and that worked out really well for us. Your early reviews of the three point line. I don't think it makes that much difference, Mike. We're going to play in the garden. Go in early and watch guys warm up. Every single one of them shoot behind the NBA line. The furthest line's the one they're going to gravitate to and shoot behind. So I don't think it's. I don't think it's that big a deal. And it's not that far. You think that opens the floor up? No. Because no. that's kind of what they're anticipating. You think six inches opens up the floor? You spread it out. That's an extra I, step do, you, do you think a foot? I don't. I mean, you think a, a foot opens up the floor that much? I don't think so. And you can't open it up any further, really, in the corner. How are you going to open it up more in the corner? Guys are standing out. How, how, you see more guys called out of bounds, standing out of bounds, trying to shoot threes in the corner than you used to never. I, I don't ever remember playing here for three years and having one of our guys step out of bounds. And we had some clumsy guys, man. And, and I don't remember anybody standing out of bounds. But that's what, that, that's what, that's what the line has done. I don't I mean that to me is what happens when you need a floor sanded. Bob, I saw you pose for a picture with the guys that are playing in the basketball tournament. How do you how do you like that team they put together? How do you, what do you think their chances are? I I I really like it cuz they they basically have a point guard and then four guys who can play multiple positions. It it, it it's 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 very similar. I just I just said and I did a just did a deal for John Flowers. I think it's very similar to a Final Four team. 
we didn't have a big. You know, Wellington Smith was our big at six foot six. Ebanks was six eight, I guess. But then, I mean, we, they were all they were all interchangeable. You could switch everything because they could all guard. You know, we just had, you know, Truck and Missoula alternating at point guard. That those were the only two that you worried about a switch happening. Joe Alexander, I was down there two days ago. Joe's down there talking about how to guard ball screens, all the calls they're going to make, and all that stuff. So it's fun watching them. It's fun having them around. You know, I mean, a lot of them come around anyway. But uh, one of them, one of them said, "Man, coach, I should have came back here every every summer because they're they have their own locker room." Uh, training room. They've got a guy who's uh, worked for two NBA teams that that knows what he's doing in the weight room. I mean, it's it's perfect for him. And and uh, they got a hot tub, a cold tub. We're gonna we're gonna put a uh, a sauna in for him. Not just for them, for our other guys too. But it's I mean they got everything that they need they can come here and rehab they can come here and lift they can come here and be in the be in the gym and work out I mean and it's great for our guys to go in and see them working we got that we had former guys in here seven o'clock this morning and then stayed around for probably two and a half hours of of our practice so Fact, all these guys are coming back. Do you think that says anything about your program, whether that's you know the guys you bring in or 